guys, welcome back. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna go a little bit further in the creating digital stickers in Affinity photo concept that I did in a video last year at this point. So there is another little trick that I think will make making digital stickers easier. Let's jump into Affinity and I'll show you what I mean. So I have a blank canvas here now Typically when I'm creating my stickers, I do so in Procreate and then for polishing them up, finishing them up, I will bring them into Affinity Photo. So I have already something on my um, clipboard. So I'm just gonna go here to these three dots, pasteboard, paste. So I need to adjust this obviously. So I'm gonna select my move tool here, make sure I'm on the right layer and then just pinch it down like this. Okay, so. Typically, what I see a lot as somebody who buys digital stickers like it's, you know, a full-time job that I pay to work at. <laughs> I didn't think that one through. But so typically the problem that I see a lot of people have is they'll create a sticker and then they will export it from Procreate and pull it right into a GoodNotes file, which is okay. However... There's a lot of blank space around these stickers that make it really hard to arrange in your planning apps like GoodNotes or Zoom Notes or Metamoji, so forth and so on. So I'm going to show you how to very easily and very quickly trim transparent pixels off of your images using Affinity Photo. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to my canvas turn transparent canvas on because you don't want a white background when you're making digital stickers. So I'm gonna zoom in real close here and see if you guys can see that the checkerboard pattern is showing behind this crayon. That means that the um, background is transparent. So let's go into our layers panel, make sure I have the right layer selected and then go into our effects panel and then we can do, if we wanted to do like a white sticker border, black sticker border. So we're gonna do outline, turn on the effect, colors already selected, radius would go up like this. And there we go. I think I'm gonna make this one white though. Okay, so then if we would wanna have a 3D effect, we would obviously go into the outer shadow. Again, make sure that the switch is turned on and then turn up your radius to get the effect. Just like that. So you wanna do this step first because creating a, a shadow effect adds content to the neighboring pixels. So now if we're like, okay, this is perfect. I love this sticker. I wanna put this into GoodNotes or export it as a PNG, but you wanna get rid of all of these transparent pixels so that it's cropped perfectly for the end user. Super, super easy to do. You're gonna to go to your menu right here, go down here to canvas again, and then just clip canvas. That takes away all of the transparent pixels in your image. So at this point, you can go back here, export, make sure you have it set to PNG, hit okay, and we'll stick this in downloads and hit save. Done, that was it. So now we can go into our good notes Go to this camera tool, tap, insert from, and we put that in the downloads folder. There it is, perfectly sized. So you see that the blue line around the crayon is not meshed up right onto the crayon. That's because of that gradient layer that we put on the outer shadow. It basically made darker to lighter pixels to create the 3D coming off the page effect. If we hadn't put that on there, if all we did was either outline or not do anything, just had the crayon itself, then you would see that these blue lines would be right up next to your sticker. So that is it, trimming and cropping transparent pieces in Affinity Photo is just a matter of canvas trim. That's it. <laughs> it's like even in Photoshop, there are a couple more steps involved in that. So plus one for Affinity Photo. I hope this helps you guys creating your digital stickers going forward because as an end user and as someone who, I buy a lot of stickers. 
I appreciate someone who takes the time to crop their stickers correctly because it makes planning with them so much easier. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you have any other questions on Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer, leave it in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.